Joe Biden has unveiled a $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan this week with more money for stimulus checks, unemployment benefits, a $15 minimum wage, and additional money for state and local aid. But according to Bloomberg, Biden is looking for Republican support on that relief package, meaning that the negotiations could result in a smaller bill or maybe no bill at all. Mm. Um, David Sirota is on top of this strategy. He's writing why Biden's priority is securing a deal with Mitch McConnell and the GOP when Democrats have taken back Congress. Editor at large of Jacobin and founder of The Daily Poster, David Sirota, joins us now. Great to see you, David. Good to see you, David. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. So basically at issue here is there's two ways you can kind of proceed with relief. One is to try to get Republican support, try to get enough to overcome a filibuster, or you can go through the budget reconciliation process, in which case you have the votes that you need, assuming that the Democratic caucus stays together. Why is Biden trying to get all of these Republicans on board at this point? It's a great question. I mean, I think he's there's a tension with Joe Biden. On one side, there's the Joe Biden who wants to do transformative, bold change. And then there's the other Joe Biden uh, who prioritizes his relationship with Republicans, who sees himself as somebody who is bipartisan, who constantly makes comments like, we need a Republican party in this country. I mean, he's made those kinds of comments uh, over and over and over again. And those two Joe Bidens are in tension. Uh, the question becomes, which Joe Biden are we going to get? Are we going to get the Joe Biden who's wants to deliver that $1.9 trillion bill you just discussed? Or are we going to get the Joe Biden who wants to be able to run out and say, look at me, I got 10 Republicans to vote for something? My view is that the American public doesn't care how a bill passes, doesn't care if a bill has 10 Republican votes, 30 Republican votes, no Republican votes. The American public typically cares about what is being delivered. Uh, and so the question with the uh, stimulus bill is what will ultimately be in Joe Biden's uh, stimulus legislation? And as you allude to, if you use a regular order situation where you're not using budget reconciliation, where you need 60 Senate votes, you're potentially going to have to have a much smaller stimulus bill with m fewer things in it because you will have you will face Republican opposition. So here's what I'm interested in, David. You actually know Senate procedure quite well. How long is budget reconciliation going to take? Because as I understand it, if you go regular order and it fails and then you do budget reconciliation, rather than starting off with budget reconciliation, you could add actually quite a bit of time to the clock. Yeah, I mean, I don't honestly, I don't know the exact calendar, but you're you're right. It takes it can take longer to do budget reconciliation. Uh, and there is a question of whether that that is part of the calculation with Biden. I think there's also the question of is he taking budget reconciliation, the the simple majority vote process off the table? Or is he saying I'm going to first try uh, a regular order situation to try to look like I'm reaching out to Republicans with a big package. Here's my initial offer. The Republicans uh, kick in and say, you know, we're, we're going to oppose this. Uh, and then they negotiate down to a budget reconciliation process. And perhaps they want to have a fight over the minimum wage. That's an, I mean, there's an example uh, that the minimum wage uh, hike in the bill, uh, there's an argument that it can, it can only pass with regular order. You really can't use budget reconciliation. There's a, there's a debate about that. Uh, but he may want to have a fight with Republicans over something like that, where it's a very popular issue for Democrats. There, there's a, a core of the Republican Party that may say, we don't want uh, to even raise the minimum wage. They have a big fight over that. It's a politically good fight for the Democrats. Uh, and then they use uh, the budget reconciliation process at that point. But I think the open question is whether Biden's people are taking budget reconciliation completely off the table, saying we never want to use this process. And if that's the case, Case, that's a disaster. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And then, I mean, on the $15 minimum wage thing, it seems to me like a much stronger position to stand in if you were just forcing a vote on that specific issue. Because right now, when you pile all these things together, it's quite easy to find something that you object to. I'm sure all of these Republicans basically object to state and local aid. So you can say, no, no, it's not about that. It's about these, this other basket of wasteful spending, blah, blah, blah. So it confuses the issue when you pile all of these things ultimately together if you're really just looking to you know, have a sort of vote that enables you to paint the Republicans as the bad guys. 
That's a really good point. And by the way, I would I would argue the same thing with the two thousand dollar checks, or should I say, excuse me, the fourteen hundred dollar checks. You know, yeah, they were promised us at two thousand. Now we're down to fourteen hundred. Never underestimate the ability of the Democratic Party to negotiate against itself. Uh, but you could have a series of votes on each particular uh, piece here to have them be much very clear votes for the public to understand. Okay, we're putting up two thousand dollar checks. Okay, we're putting up minimum wage. Okay, we're putting up this and that. Uh, to have a series of votes to have the Republicans have to oppose extremely popular things and, and oppose them in a kind of singular fashion. Uh, I think we will see whether that happens in this process. Overall, what do you think this says about the Biden team and their overall legislative strategy in the context of the major failures that they had in the Obama administration? Well, it, it does feel like we're living through uh, the same history again. I mean, the Obama administration began with a debate over the stimulus legislation where uh, the Senate caucus, the Senate Democratic caucus had 60 Senate votes uh, and Barack Obama and the Obama administration were obsessed with trying to find Republican votes for a stimulus package. And what ended up happening was is that they whittled down the bill to a size that was not adequate. Uh, and th ultimately, the economic recovery was one of the slowest economic recoveries in American history history in part because of that. And so the, 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 the mystifying thing is how has the Biden ad, uh, administration, the prospective Biden administration, not learned that lesson? I mean, that was a big lesson. And if you learn that lesson, I would argue that what you say is, you know what, if we have enough votes through reconciliation to pass a real piece of legislation that's big enough and adequate enough uh, for the economic crisis at hand. Why are we trying to find 10 Republican votes if we don't need that? Why would we be willing to negotiate against ourselves, negotiate down a bill if we already have the votes? And the crazy thing is, is that the election just happened. The, the Democrats just won Congress. What does it say that the that the Biden folks' first instinct is we won the election, the Democrats won the election, and our first instinct is we have to go try to find Republican votes? In, in a sense, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, and, and by the way, just a, a little known secret, Republicans are also allowed to vote for budget reconciliation. <laughs> really excited about giving Republicans yeah. an opportunity here. Um, David, great to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks, David. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Going to be back with more Team Rising. We're going to stick with us.